Cannon Johnson and Dan Blanc are just two guys who love the fencing industry and are here to help you grow your company and find solutions to your business challenges. So buckle up and hold on tight as they take you on this ride called My Fence Life. What is going on to the fence fam? Can I say fence fam? Joe Ever says that a lot. Is that something that he started? I don't know, know, man. I know I see, uh, I've been what using is that up? a lot. Fence fam. Hey guys, today is August the 10th, 2022. Believe it or not, we are flying through the year 2022. The time is 6.57 p.m. And, Dana, we're only 27 minutes behind schedule, but we love the suspense. That's so it? That's what we're going to do, guys. Um, I, honestly, I hate that you guys sometimes wait and, and wait and wait and wait. But here we are. There's a lot that happens behind the scenes, a lot of BS and going on between Dan and myself. Um, and speaking of myself, my name is Canada Johnson. I'm with Jackson Fence Company up here in the beautiful, gorgeous Homeland of West Tennessee. I've been waiting all week to play that. All that's week. Why, to play that's that. probably the highlight of your whole week. It is. It is. I've been waiting all week for that, man. And this is my good old buddy, old pal. He's a little bit of a punk. <laughs> He's from the swampy butt region of our country down oh. there in Louisiana, Mandeville specifically. This is Dan Blount. They call him the Fence King, and this is our show, My Fence Life Live. Everybody, yeah. everybody, yeah. let's get into it. Yeah. Get stupid. Get, get started. Get started. Get started. Get started. Get started. Oh, man. What's happening? Man, just another gorgeous day up here. Uh, Dan, you got a lot of stuff on your desk back there. What is, what is all those boxes? Man, it's been crazy over here, bro. We've been. Kicking ass. Been order, ordered from OZ, OZ Fence. Yes, it is. Look at that. I've got a uh, nice five gallon bucket of expert staining seal, pecan, pecan for some of you people. Then I even got it from I got a Fence. Yeah. OZ Fence. Yeah. OZFence.store. I used the MFL15 promo code. <laughs> I got 15% off. And MFL I got a one because it was over one hundred and fifty dollars. Mm. MFL one five. Yeah, what happens when so, you put in MFL one five? What 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 happens again? What ha well fireworks go off? All kinds <laughs> of stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bells start ringing. Angels get their wings. More importantly, you say fifteen percent, and we put Dan Wheeler in his place. Every MFL one five typed into OZ Fence Start Store. Puts Dan Wheeler further into his place of non Yes, it does. So visit ozfence.store, MFL15. Save yourself 15%. Seriously, Joe Everett, hey, you're killing it. He's got a lot of fence fittings over there at that store. Um, a lot of fence tools, too. So if does, you need man. it, check it out. Save 15%. Tell them Dan and Cannon sent you. And tell them, um, I don't know, tell them, tell them Dan Wheeler, hey, you suck. <laughs> Hey, thank you for uh, Expert Saint and Seal as well for jumping on board and helping us do this show every week. It costs, uh, costs us a little bit of money to do this. Believe it or not, um, inflation has hit the podcast world as well. Wages are up. Cost of goods is up. Even my internet costs more money than it costed this time last year. So thank you to Expert Stain and Seal with 18 colors and, and, and a three-year warranty. Expert Stain and Seal is definitely one of the best stains on the market. I practice Real that one. Good. Realgoodstain.com. Yeah, and the back you know the back pages is damngoodstain.com. That's damn that's that's the <laughs> my fence life. Uh yeah, strategy. man. And um it's employee proof. You can't they can't mess it up. My favorite part, no running, no dripping, no staining. And if you mess up, you can wipe it off. Yeah. I wish fences were like that. I wish you could just ah, uh, yeah, we did put that in the wrong spot. I'm sorry. Let me wipe it up. Let me just wipe it up real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so um, hey guys, we're live today. We're in the Southwest Automated and Security Studio, and we want to say South Southwest. We want to send a big thank you to them. Um, with over 19 locations, Southwest is my little cheat sheet. Is your one stop shop, Dano? Yes, gate automation, access control, video surveillance, hardware, and more. Visit SouthwestAutomated.com. Yeah, Southwest Automated. Rock and rolling, bro. You walk in the door. They walk you through everything from start to finish. Online technical support, 
they'll even come out to your project. I was talking Can't to G Mac, uh, G Mac yesterday. He was telling me how to wire up a, a video video surveillance camera. So, yes, indeed. Help you with way more than just like on the surface, it looks like gate operators, right? But if you really want to secure your property, which we have, we have a large property. We have some 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 blind spots, if you will. Um, try Southwest. Talk to Jerry Mac. He'll hook you up. So. Dano, um, a lot's been going on over here, I, and we need to talk about it. We've been a little distracted, man. You too, huh? <laughs> Dude, I've been busy, bro. I've been, <laughs> too. I don't even know which ends up. Dylan's like, did you get this done? I'm like, no. Did you get that done? No. I got sticky notes everywhere, papers that y'all can't see because I got them pushed and hidden, but you just got <laughs> papers everywhere. So you did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like my whole desk in front of me, like I can put my elbows here, but any further, I wouldn't be able to. There's so <laughs> much stuff. You, it's just just out of sight here. Yeah. So, so my little ice thing that I keep my ice in, it was still sitting here from last week. I mean, it's just been crazy. I've got my my salesman cup here from last week. It. I don't know what happened to these last seven days, to be honest with you. Uh, and I really don't have a whole lot to show for it either. So this is look. That's like three or. Four four fingers of whiskey tonight bro I'm, I'm i've had a rough week and i'm cutting loose tonight pepper i know you're watching might have to come get me baby go get him baby daddy can't drive home tonight <laughs> hey daniel let's say hi to some of our guests we got joseph rivers he's always like the first one to comment and always it's like it's it's almost like this show is programmed for these names to pop up so joseph what's up dude you always yeah. comment first and we Him appreciate and john. that john and, Wait, john really. Wait, and ryan Wait, moppin sorry. ryan moppin's always at the top yeah, always. Yeah. Hey, Benji McKinney, what's up, dude? From Clever Fox Online. Benji has been working on my website this week, and Dan, we we've got some major improvements that's going to drop pretty soon, uh, and I'm excited. So, thank you, Benji, for what you're doing for us. Shane Catton, what's up, bro? Ooh, what's uh, up, Shane? Let me oh see. I got a little. The Fence King is a shampoo stealing, podcast spitting. <laughs> You got to love Shane. We got Daniel Anderman. He says, morning, fellas. Daniel, where are you from, bro? Daniel's, uh, he is marketing with uh, Southwest Automated Security. It's Your one-stop shop. I thought he might be uh, like Pakistan or somewhere like in another time zone. <laughs> he might be yeah. those downloads we're getting from uh, Kuwait. <laughs> <laughs> is that you, Daniel? <laughs> I saw that, too. Hey, so we got Susan K. Worley. We got Chris Hearn. He says, let's go. What up, Chris? Aaron Not Preston, me. he says he had to pause his TV when he's seen us come on. Thank you, Aaron, for doing that. Yeah. Uh, like Jessica that. Fraser. What's up, Jessica? Jessica, thank you for tagging your uh, husband, I guess, uh, William. Yeah, Megan Peppa Duffy here. Peppa. Uh, I jumped around. Uh, we got Daniel. Oh, Daniel, he with, he's with uh, Howdy Neighbor Fence Company. Howdy yeah, Neighbor man. Fence is in the house. I love that name. Yeah, I've been following him on Facebook. Hey, here he is, John Waithey, Ola Amigos. <laughs> <laughs> Look at old Kelvin in here. Hey, boss. What up, Kelvin? <laughs> Looking for that check, bro. <laughs> yeah, he is. Kelvin does all our graphics and uploads everything to YouTube, and he calls us boss. <laughs> Every time. Sir, Every sir time. boss. Sir boss. Sir boss. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. oh, there's, there's Daniel chiming in. Start to finish support for our partners. That's what SAS is here to do. He's just a, a fellow Tunian like Nan. So I guess he's a he's down there in the swamp butt as well. He is. Ryan Offers is in here. Get it, boys. What's happening, Ryan? We got a full we got a heavy house tonight, man. Hey Ryan, cool. look. I changed my my thing. We'll be happy. Did that gator come from Louisiana is what Aaron says? What does that mean? What gator? Mm hmm do I have an alligator somewhere in here? I got All right, it. guys. Hey, it. so here's the context of, of, of tonight's show. This is a this is what we call MFLQA. MFLQA is just a just an abbreviation for My Fence Life Q and A. All right, and so what what we're gonna do is Dan is gonna answer all your hard questions, and I'm gonna answer all your slow pitch softball questions. So we've actually got some questions already pre scripted over here that 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 have been sent in to us. Um, 
Some of you guys have our phone numbers and we'll text us. Some of you guys have our, you know, Facebook Messenger, Instagram. Uh, everybody's communicating to us on a different platform and we appreciate it. And then sometimes people will, will leave a comment here and we'll answer it live on the show or answer it the next show. So if you've got something that you want us to talk about, Dan, uh, these, these, these folks, these kind folks simply need to put a comment into the box below. Yeah. Uh, you, you can visit my fence life.com and, and, and leave us a suggestion. If you got a bigger paragraph, that's a great place to do it. Also, also another great place to communicate with us is YouTube. Spotify, yep. Yep. Apple Podcasts, listen and leave us a review. Now, Dan, did we get a, a new review recently? Man, you know, it's funny. <clears throat> you said that you uh, podcast, we have already done half the downloads we did last month. We hit that yesterday. So wow. we really want to thank you guys for that. That's a big deal for us. Yes, but, is. yeah, we did get a couple of, uh, of reviews this past week. Let's hear these reviews. And they're really great reviews. And maybe we should have a little music in the background for this because it's all about this guy right here. Old Dan Wheeler. Thank y'all for these reviews. (laughs) This one comes from Kevin787. All right. It cuts it off. It says much better than. What is it? Apple or Spotify? Spotify. This is on Apple. So if you don't believe me, you can go to Apple and read these. Yep. As a fellow fence business owner slash fence geek, I thought I found the best podcast when I heard about the fence industry podcast. Then I found this one. Love the passion you guys have of our industry. God bless and keep up the great work. I love it. (laughs) So with that being said, use MFL 15. (laughs) Because we're going to kick Dan's butt on these orders. uh, Get 15% off. Okay. Is there another one? Yeah, so there's another one. This one comes from Corey B. 1018. Hey, I know that guy. Corey Bigelow? Corey Barnes. I think we both know Corey. What do you say? Hey, Corey, whatever Corey this is, let us know. But it says, best fencing pod, and then it cuts it off. I'm assuming podcast. Absolutely. This podcast has a wealth of knowledge for many leaders in the fence industry. The lighthearted back and forth between Dan and Cannon makes you feel like they're there. Hopefully, Dan Wheeler can learn from them and they both can elevate the industry. <laughs> hey, guys, I really appreciate these reviews. That poor Dan Wheeler. Yeah, I hope he's listening right now. He's probably listening he right now, cussing, throwing stuff around the room. We got a group text with him and Joe Everest, and uh, we go ham in it. It's it's funny. Well, we rag each other all day. And Joe <laughs> just kind of peeps in with some eyeballs every once in a while. He doesn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to give a plug real quick, Dano. Go ahead. For Mr. Ryan Sloop. Yeah. Ryan is in uh he's he's in Rowan County, North Carolina, a little town called Mount Alma, right outside of Mooresville. And um so Ryan has started a new uh podcast platform specifically geared toward ag fencing. So if any of our followers are, are interested in ag fence work or, or or that side of the you know industry, by all means, I would encourage you to, to to go follow Ryan. And at this point, he has a whopping two episodes, um, and he's doing these on the USA Ag Fencers Facebook page. So this is how we started to. We just went live on Facebook, and then eventually we we kind of. Um, I don't think we graduated necessarily. We just paid a little, a little bit more money, and now our our show is also on Apple um, and things like that. So, uh, yeah, check out check out Ryan Sloop's new show. It's called The Scoop, believe it or not. So, The Scoop with Ryan Sloop. What do you think about that, Dan? I like it. A little, little cheesy. The Scoop with Sloop. Yeah, and it's over there again. It's at the USA Ag Fencing page on Facebook. So, so follow that page, like that page, and 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 start listening to Ryan. He's a really good dude. Now, his second episode, I want to say, featured yours truly, Cannon Johnson. So, I actually went over there to North Carolina last weekend. I hung out with this guy, and we did a podcast together. A lot of yeah, fun. I saw that. Y'all were on his back porch. Yeah, we thought would have been finished by now. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a sore subject for him. But yeah, he's he's got a back porch that that's been under construction for a year. So um, man, look at these people porch. popping in here: Evan Gardner, Robert Looker. What's up, Alex? Nathan Downs. Nathan Downs. Oh, Nate Dog. Nate, 
Send me that uh, Google Doc, please, sir. So I can get it over to my salesman. Looky, looky, looky. You got Alex Harris from Fencing Unlimited here. He said, what up, boys? That's my guy. Hey, so uh, what else has been going on? Uh, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Dude, Damn, we were building out. I got to tell you this. Go ahead. You remember the other day we did that phone call and you were like, man, what are they doing? Building a shed in the background? There's a bunch of banging going on. You remember that? Yeah, man. You're like, hey, let's record this call. And it's boom, 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 boom. I'm like, yeah, yeah, man. So oh, I wish I could take you guys there. So we are, we're working uh, pretty quickly, might I add you, on a uh, – we've expanded our office, okay? Uh, we've added like another, I don't know, a 12 by 12 area. There you um, go. So, so – we already had this one room. It was like 12 by 10. We took the wall down and we added another another 12 foot to it. So we've now got this room. It's like 12 foot wide and 20 or 22 foot long. Really big room. And uh, the reason I'm excited about it, two reasons. One, I think I might start doing some podcasting from there. So you might see a different background. Nice. I don't know. Maybe not. It might be like a I'm every now and then, every now and then, you know, just change it up a little bit. Different, different deal. But anyways, so what we're doing, Dan, I was really inspired by what you're doing there. Um, but we are working on a customer facing um, area. All right. So this this it's not much, man. It's a 12 by 20. And and we've kept the uh, the OSB um, press board theme going in this build out. OK, so. Well, OSB is an eighty five dollars a sheet right now. So you know, probably- oh, it's like twenty five. It's still way more than it's worth, you know, Um but anyway, so yeah, we're building out this 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 room, um, and this room is actually gonna have three desks in it for sales. Boom, 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 right in a row. Boom, 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 boom. We're gonna have a, a like a sixty-five inch television with a slideshow showing some of our work. Maybe have some like fun facts, you know, thrown in there or whatever, just about our team, about our people, um, just different product knowledge, you know. So when people come in. I want to give them. Uh, you've been here, Dan. I mean, this this place that we have, it's an awesome facility. So, but the place that we have, it's 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 uh, anybody that's not followed us or seen us on 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 the Facebook, it's an old 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 cotton gin. Like, did you just say the Facebook? How old are you, man? Uh, I saw Cannon on the Facebook on the interwebs. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, man, uh, we get this really old cotton gin. It's 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 huge, very big, a lot of concrete, very drafty, okay, um, area. And we've actually we've made it work quite well. We get a little, you know, it's it's working for us. However, we won't when somebody comes to visit us. Um, but there's a there's a nice, clean, and and you know, kind of isolated place for those people to hang out because they're coming more and more man that's what's neat about this uh just just a year ago dude we were working from home we were in our office uh mm. we were in my garage which had been converted into an office and we were separate separated from the shop separated from the truck separated from everything and if somebody wanted to 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 come, we'd have to leave the office, which was my house, and go meet them at their house or this shop. And it was mm-hmm. always weird, you know what I mean? And so half of the time, maybe more than half the time, the, the crews would come in at 6.30. They would leave by 7.30 most of the time, come back sometime between 3 and 5 p.m., and nobody was here in between, you know? Mm-hmm. And there's absolutely no telling how many people we missed on the on the daily, you know. Um, so now that we're actually here and we keep the gate open throughout the day, like people, uh, I'm not going to say they pour in. They just but, wander in. huh? Man, we get. So you, you're picking up uh, customers and you're picking up retail sales, too, right? Well, I'd say we probably get seven to ten people a day that come see us. And sometimes at the really? same time, like it'll be a lot of people. Like, what the heck is going on here? You know? I don't have that um, many coming to me, but we have people coming to our office now and it's it's a good feeling when they're like, you know, you should have more people come to your office. Yeah. So they're signing I mean, they're coming to sign the contract, they're coming to give us a check. There's retail people, there there's there's uh, local competitors that come and buy some stuff from us, you know. It's just it's 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 um now I paint this picture and it sounds like this big boomy. It's nothing like uh, and a whole lot going on, but we've given ourselves a place. We've given ourselves a physical, tangible place that people can come and do business with us, you know. And they're they come and do business with us. It's, I, th- I just think it's so cool, you know. And I can only see in the future that that grows. So we, um, 
anyways, on this tangent here, we went from at my house just a year ago to, to, to this area that I'm in now, which is at the back of our shop, our cotton gin. And just over here um, to my side, we've got this 12 foot by 20 foot room that's going to be specifically dedicated for sales. And uh, when we built it out, I was like, look, I want this to kind of have the feel of like an Apple store. Like imagine a clean, mm -hmm. bright white Apple store with OSB on the walls. <laughs> just imagine that. You know what I mean? Are you painting the walls white? <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're going to actually put like this is all concrete. You know, this is just bare concrete that I'm on right now with, with like a little, my office has a road, but the rest of it is just bare concrete. Mm -hmm. And um, so what we want to do is um, probably put like down some, some of that vinyl, looks like laminate, vinyl, vinyl plank material. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm actually going to get some white metal. I went to Luke Gibson's shop. He, he had this white metal on his walls and on the ceiling in his big shop. And I was like, dude, it's so bright in here, you know? Uh -huh. And so we're going to put white metal across the ceiling and... Um, some nice, you know, kind of, kind of luxury vinyl, you know, floors. Yeah. So people come. I just want, I just want, I want the, you know, I want the brand to be legit. I want the what they see on Facebook, what they see on their website to match what they see when they come visit us. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So, well, you know, it's funny you say that because um, I remember probably three to six months ago, Joe Everest mentioned, "Hey." It's going to start, the tide's going to start turning, and it's going to start turning to more face-to-face -face relationship with your customers, not just a order-taker process. That's right. And we're noticing that, too, because we started implementing uh, more and more personal contact. Yeah. You know, and the other thing, too, is, man, um, with ArcSight, if you're on the job, we, we're, we're bidding the job. I mean... Dylan did another one today. Went out, bid it, bid the job. Lady signed, came back with a check. I was like, dude, you're gonna be like VV out there. It's nice. It is nice. Contract everything right there. A lot so of the, work to get to that point, but yeah. So the personal contact, I am personally, um, I like that idea a lot, and I think every touch point along the way should be specifically designed. And specifically executed to make the experience special. So when they see your stuff on Facebook, it should feel, sound, smell a certain kind of way. You know, when they call your 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 office or your establishment, it should sound and feel a certain kind of way. When they get an email, it should sound and feel a certain kind of way. You know, so you talk about the personal touch, and I just want to say that me personally, I'm a huge advocate for for keeping my sales personnel in the office and ready to talk okay um, not only are people coming in to see us now but when a customer calls you know what do they say they say hey i want to get i want to see about getting a price on a fence right <clears throat> they didn't just wake up and say hey you know what i want to get a fence and i'm going to call jackson fence this morning this has been something they've been thinking about you know, maybe for a few weeks, maybe a few months, at least a few days, right? And so they finally pick up the phone. <laughs> so they finally pick up the phone and they call, okay? And 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 your company answers and they say, "Hey, I want to talk to you about a fence." Okay? I feel like that moment right there, you've got to have somebody on staff that can have that conversation. Somebody that can take that phone, hold a 10 to 15 minute conversation with that person and really talk to them about a fence and maybe even give them a price over the phone. Now, look, I'm big about my salesman. I love it. We send so many people to it and so many people just find it and use it on their own. But I will say this. If you call our company because you want to talk to us, I will never direct you back to my website ever. I feel like if you call my company, that's the way that you want to do business, and that's where we're going to meet you. And I feel like that's our job as entrepreneurs and business owners is to meet our customers where they want to be met. And that means having a facility. That means going to their house. That means answering the phone. That means having a, a, a tool on your website like My Salesman that they can do it on their own without ever, ever talk, talk, talking to you. You know. Um, anyways, um, why are we talking about this, Dan? I don't know, man, but uh, I hope you hit record. I did about 48 minutes ago. Perfect, because I just hit record. <laughs> Whew. I got to get better it, at man. that. Look at Cannon having his, having, his, uh, having his game together. 
Yeah. But Micah, man, uh, thank you. I needed to hear that. He's he's on fire. Yeah, thank he you, is, Micah. man. I think this is a good heartfelt, hey, what you're doing with your business. And I think people need to hear this, man. It's the the, the tide's turning. What do you think when you call some a place or whatever? They're like, hey, you know, the call time is longer than usual. Blah, 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 blah. We've heard it before, you know. Right. What do you think? You're like, damn, I gotta wait 17 minutes. Or it said, or they say, press one now to, to be put in our queue for the next representative to call you back. Do you like that as an option? I hate that option. Yeah. But I mean, what do you do? What do you do when you have that option? I think, I think that option is there because they don't have enough people to handle what's going on. Um, but what do you, what, uh, but as a person, but, like when you're calling, cause but as a person, yeah, I'm like, Oh, these mugs are busy. So I get it. I get it. Um, but do you stay on the line or, or do you do you press one? I stay on the line because back? I got something I need to handle. And I'm one of those persons of people that, you know, I'm like, hey, I'm going to handle it. Let's get it done. I don't care if I got to wait 20 minutes. It's all said and done. It's checked off my list. I always feel like they're going to forget me. If I hate, if I press one and hang up, how do I know you're going to call me back? You know what I mean? Or how do I know if I don't hold, I might get on the phone sooner. You know what I mean? So Susan K. Worley says, I want somebody to answer the phone immediately. Of course, that's that's the world we live in. Shane Catton says, um, call me back. I, I can't wait. Ha, ha, ha. Number taken. John Waithy, he says, I also want to hear the differences. Oh, okay. All right. So, man, I, I guess we need to be moving along. Um, we got some oh, good questions in here, man. Look at Dylan yeah, being I think we need to move along into the uh, Q and A part of the show here. Yeah. Uh oh. Is it breaking news already? Stop it. Uh, I cracked up every time I hear that. Damn, Blanc, we've got breaking news coming our way from Job Nimbus. Job Nimbus is now officially, if you haven't heard, the best contractor software in the planet. Yes, sir. So you got to be more efficient. You got to be more prepared. You got to be more productive. You got to get job in this. Yeah, more organized, man. So can I tell you something? What? I forgot to print the news story off. Have you got anything? I, I got it. I got it. So that's why the show was late. Cannon's like, I don't have news. Our printer was jammed up. What can I do? So I'm going to cover the news, guys. And it's not that good, but it's the best we got. Why? Because we got to have a breaking news section and we got to talk about the job numbers. And we're busy. So uh, I found some uh, funny or odd newspaper headlines that make zero sense. So uh, one of them is forecasters call for weather on Monday. And somebody responded with, I sure hope we have weather <laughs> on Monday. <laughs> um, they say that. Since the prices of milk are rising, cows lose their job as milk prices. <laughs> <laughs> this stupid stuff, man. Is this Mir- miracle cure kills fifth patient? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. One more. Man accused of killing lawyer receives a new attorney. Imagine being that <laughs> attorney. <laughs> I killed my own one. My old one, huh? Uh State population to double by 2040. Babies are to blame. It's supposed to be about fence. You anything about fence? Uh, this one's probably about fence. Mississippi's literacy program shows improvement, and they misspelled Mississippi. How'd they spell it? M I S S I P P I. They left out two of the S's. Yeah, and they left I, out two of the humpback, humpback. M I right? cricket letter, cricket letter. Yeah, or uh, breathing oxygen is linked to staying alive. <laughs> What's wrong with people? Uh, uh, anyway, guys, we tried our best. We'll be better prepared next week. Cannon's been very, very busy. I've been busy, and we kind of slacked on the breaking news. We bought some new trucks this weekend. I saw that, man. Actually, uh, I was talking to you when you were driving back, and one of them looked pretty sweet. Dude, I love it. Love it. Two of them, too, man. They're identical. So, Anybody that's that's concerned about a recession, I'm gonna say this real fast, Dan, and then we can move in. You and this recession talk. I'm justifying what I'm doing. So let's listen. Listen. All right. So there's everybody's talking about recession, 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 recession. Okay. 
Now listen to me. Listen to me. I do think it's very possible that we can talk our way into a recession. Okay. Oh, definitely. It's possible that we can talk our way into it. All right. So well, we we talked our way into uh being um uh with COVID. Right. Yes. That's we right. had to be what did they call it when everybody had to stay home? I can't think of the word. Quarantined. Yeah, we talked ourselves into being quarantined and staying home for two weeks, and now you That's get right. COVID and four days later you're back at work. <laughs> Time <laughs> you know, change, baby. Funny how the um, media is not talking about it anymore. All right. So so they're wanting to know about the trucks too. So but let me tell you this about recession. All right. So we went out and we got two brand new trucks. We've never done this before. Let me tell you that. We've never done this before. But I'm gonna tell you why. Brian Brian says what happens to Cannon's love for the pre-95 trucks. I still got a soft spot, Brian, but we'll get there. Okay. So here's the deal. Six weeks. We've called the record company five different times in six wow. weeks. Okay. For three different trucks. Okay. And we've got a couple of trucks, at least, I would say three trucks right now that have become absolute problem childs. Okay. You put a part on them, and next week there's a whole different problem. Okay. So when they, when people use the terminology of you're throwing parts at it, I feel like we've reached that position with a couple of trucks, all right? So <clears throat> here's the deal. Brian, he says, what happened to your love for pre-95? Brian, I still love the old truck, okay? Uh, we've got a 91, we've got a 2000, we've got a 2001, a 2003, a 2005, 2004, 2007. But we have a, a, a whole fleet of old vehicles, okay? However, um, we, we did that because we could afford those vehicles. And... We wanted to stay recession proof and we wanted to stay nimble and we want we wanted to be ready in case in case the sky crashed on us, right? Right. The problem is this. Right now, in the last two years, the sky has not been crashing on us. It's been booming, you know? And so I think there's something to be said about this. I think there's something to be said about Yes, you need to build a business that can withstand a recession. You need to build a business that can withstand decline, okay? But you've also got to build a business that's ready to grow and ready to go when the times are good, all right? And we got into a position here, Jackson Fence, evidently, we're busier than we've ever been right now, okay? Busier than we have ever been right now, all right? I'm tired, too, you know? <sighs> And I'm getting calls at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 8 o'clock in the morning that, hey, my truck, my crew is on the side of the road. We can't get to the job or we can't get to the shop. Please send help. Dude, right? it's frustrating, man. It's it's frustrating. So then you've got to stop what you're doing or somebody's got to stop what they're doing. they got to go save the crew. And they've got to have a vehicle that's big enough to save the crew. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And think about what I was saying. We had five tow bills in six weeks. So you, you you're already down one. To, that you could have saved them in, you know? So you, even your backups are, aren't, aren't backups, you know? Right. So this is what we did. Um, John wanted to know, what'd you get? John, we got two brand new, and I'm proud of this. I'm really proud of this. 2022 Chevrolet 3500s crew cabs. They've got a utility bed on them. Not a utility bed. It's like a, uh, it's like a crossover utility. Dude, th those beds are bad ass that you got. That's yeah. one of them. Yeah. See that? So the, the, the big box between the back door and the front tire or the back tire, that's a uh, that's a three foot wide, three foot tall box with with shelves in it. Um, over the back tire, there's a there's like, like a trunk that opens up. They're stored for freaking days. Yeah. This is a crew cab truck. Um, and there's two of them. That's what that's what's cool. There's two of them. They're freaking identical. Um, Duramax six six four wheel drive. Um, hey, vinyl, four -wheel drive? Yeah, vinyl yeah, seats, yeah. vinyl floors. Well, we get, man, we get off in the field sometimes too, you know, so I got to yeah. be ready. Um, you ain't messing so, now. Anyways, um, <laughs> somebody says, bow, Danny says bow tie for life. So yeah, me yeah. personally, I'm not big about brand. I don't give a damn if it's a if it's a Ford or a Chevy or Dodge. You know, I say that. I, I've always kind of have a, had a soft spot for the Chevrolet trucks. We built our company with 
just so happened, not on purpose, on Chevrolet trucks, 6.0 gas motors, and them jokers pulled like everything like, we put behind it. You know what I'm saying? They like gas, boy. They like that so, gas. Anyways, that's that's what happened this weekend. Um, those two trucks are are they have immediately been taken to the shop to get wrapped. Um, and once they get done getting wrapped, um, there's another company that's gonna take them. It's gonna put some strobe lights in it, Dan. Um, kind of like Dan Blount with our strobes. So we yeah. we end up on these jobs sometimes. Uh, it's weird the jobs we get into. We're either out in the field or on the side of the street, and um. We, for some reason, it seems like we, we at least once a month, we got a job that we're working off the side of the road. We might be putting up, you know, 800 foot of fence and literally driving beside it, you know. Well, on those jobs, we want to be able to park on the street, turn on our, our, our strobes and work safely, you know. Um, we've, we've been parked on the side of the road working before and somebody's driving to the back of our rig, you know. Yeah. So, um, kind of a big deal. That. Yeah, yeah. Those, uh, those emergency lights are nice. Yeah, so we nice. want them, and I want them kind of hidden too. I don't want them like the big orange. No, know, no, you can, put, you can put them within your tail lights, and within your other lights, and look into getting green. Green is the new strobe because green yeah. is the color that the human eye sees the best and the furthest really? away. Yeah, I thought it was blue. No, it's green. So we're getting a lot we of uh, comments. <laughs> I know. <laughs> A lot of comments here. So Robert Looker is rocking a 2011 Ford F350 with a service body and trailer. So yeah, we pull trailer. We got a 20 foot deck over behind our trucks. Um, then this truck here, what I like about it, it's a utility bed, but it's a low profile utility bed, so you can still get pallets onto the bed, um, and you can also haul a gooseneck with it. You know, yeah. a lot of the utility beds, they they're made in a way you can't put a gooseneck trailer behind it. And I can see our company growing. To the point where we're pulling goosenecks more and more. So, um, anyways, I'm excited about that. Just wanted to share. Um, there is, is there a recession looming? I don't know. I think we're kind of talking ourselves into it, but it might be looming. So, you know, do what you want with your company. Um, stay recession I, ready. I think we're talking ourselves into it more than what it really is. I did too. It's like the COVID thing. You know, people driving in their cars with masks on. You know, yeah, just. I think we talk ourselves into it more than, than what it really is. And but the sad thing about it is is everyone is acting like it. Yeah. Because of all the talk. Right. Well, you know? we're, we're we've been fortunate. I mean, we've we've had a really good uh I'd say the last six weeks here, which is also the time we've been throwing these damn trucks every all the, you know. But the last six weeks of sales have been extremely promising, extremely um strong so you know i can't speak for the rest of the country but i can speak for you know uh, what's happening here and our market is still responding and uh, i hope that never changes but it might well it's a little different here where i'm at because we're coming off the hurricane the influx of the hurricane work and then we have all these fence companies that weren't fence companies eight months ago they're all trying to scoop up work and stay alive because they quit their job working at the car lot or working at the print shop or Starbucks, wherever the hell they were working. And now they're fence guys. So um, things are a little different in my market. I need to try to hire those guys. John Waithy. Hey, John, where are you at, man? I don't even know. I, I hate saying that, but John says he's not seeing a recession at all busier than ever. He might be in damn Mandeville, Louisiana. I know one <laughs> thing about John. If a recession comes his way, he's kicking his ass and then putting it in jail. That's right. That's right. <laughs> like John his likes to kick uh, some ass. So let's do some Q and A, Dan. How about I do the Q and A, and you do? Okay. I do the Qs, and you do the As. I'll try. Or whatever. I just know you like putting me on a hot seat. Look at me squirming over here. I think I think the first one's probably <laughs> more. Uh, I think the first one's probably more for me. Uh -oh. it's, a it's a marketing question. It must be a real simple one. Yeah, it's easy. It's an easy one. It has pictures. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. First question is, I don't know who sent it, but it said, how should I market in order to just start up my business? Ooh. All right. So here's the deal. Is it just luck of the draw if my business takes off? Or would you say there's a way to make sure the business takes off? Damn, is that really what it says? 
Yeah. So first things first, no, it's not luck of the draw. <laughs> That's absolutely not luck of the draw. Like there's no, there's no, there's no random assigning uh, numbers here where you just wait in line and your number gets called and oh well, hey you know what here's your successful fence company that's not how that works at all so let's understand that there's going to be a crap ton of hard work and you're going to give up a lot of stuff so I, I can't say that loud enough you're going to miss ball games uh funerals anniversaries uh, wait, all more stuff than you can possibly imagine you're going Birthday. to get up okay? so me and ryan sleep the other day this is this is something i just want to hit on this real fast we're talking about what is the cost of success hmm. and we're talking about luck here and we're talking about how to start up but i want you to hear this loud and clear you're going to be so busy at some point in time trying to save this business trying to make this thing go you can't just nudge it You've got to jump in with this thing, okay? You're going to be so busy that you're not going to have time to mourn, okay? Mm -hmm. My granddaddy died two years ago <laughs> in a growing business, okay? We're busy. I literally had time to go to the funeral, all right? I remember that. And leave. And my whole entire family, you know, they, they, they do the thing after the funeral. They have lunch or whatever, you know. They don't understand, you know. They think I'm 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 uptight. They think the business isn't isn't okay. They don't understand. And maybe hell, maybe I don't understand. You know what I mean? But I do know this. You know, we're a few years into this. It's 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 fast. It's big. It's strong. It's bigger than me. You know. And you you will come into times where you need to be upset and sad, but you can't afford to be upset and sad. You got to pick it up and go. That's reality. That's the cost of success. All right, hey man. I've had I've had Pepper in the hospital, having a little procedure done. I drop her off. Everything's good. I leave. I get a text message. She's in recovery. I come back. I got uh, I got Mama there, and I'm like, all right, Mama, she's good. All right, I'm rolling out. <clears throat> and Mama's got to stay there with her. Right. You know, I'm out selling jobs. This was you know a few years ago. And trust me, I still hear it today about it that's right and i hear about birthdays you can see peppers in the comments right now going birthdays i bet if i was a fence post you'd be holding me <laughs> <laughs> so so um, so here's the deal um what's the where, what what steps to start the business here we go here we go what uh, steps should I market? let me let me let me tell you this um young man lady look <clears throat> You're going to see on these forums a lot of people talking about money. Charge more, yada, yada, yada. Listen, the absolute first thing you've got to master is being a good tradesperson. And I'm going to I'm gonna take that to the grave, okay? If you worry about being a good fence builder, a good fence installer, and doing high-quality work, when you say you're going to do it and do exactly what you say you're going to do, plus a little bit, if you do that for long enough, the customers and the money will begin to take care of itself, okay? Again, don't focus on the money right now. Focus on doing a good job, okay? So in order to do a good job, you've got to have jobs, right? To get those jobs, this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to tap in to the interwebs <laughs> you're gonna have to get a google business listing you're gonna have to get at, at at minimum a website you're gonna have to get a presence on facebook and and let me tell you facebook is very inexpensive and almost free it can be free in many cases get you a business facebook page set it up yep. start posting immediately as soon as you have stuff to post post it post it often be proud be informative Find your niche and, and 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 hone on that. You know, if you know a lot about fence and you're learning stuff, post it as you learn it. You know, you don't have to know everything. Just say, "Wow, I never knew this about a four by four. I'm going to tell everybody I know about this four by four. You know, and tell them. So you, you know, so another thing is, uh, Brian Moppin said, "Step one, contact Benji," and that covers some of the things that you said. Yeah, yeah. Benji, Hire will, get you, Benji will get your Google listing ready to go. And get people funneled to the website that he's building for you. He will. But and, and if you're like me, you're gonna have to figure this shit out on a budget. I started with six hundred dollars yeah. and I spent half of that on an auger. Okay. So 
unfortunately, I didn't have the luxury of hiring a Benji. You know, I had to go to Wix.com and build my own website. And, and luckily, they let me pay for it over 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 a 12-month period. It's like, you know, $19 a month, you know. So I didn't even have to come out of much money on the front end. So you can do it on your own. You can make it work. You can make it go. Now, if you're going to spend some money, listen to me here loud and clear. You need to spend money on Google AdWords period okay if you if you want to order pizza i guarantee you you pull out your phone you go to the google search engine and you type in pizza delivery near me okay people are doing the same thing for fans get get in with google get in with google fast and and, and give them your money that's who needs your money if you want to make the phone ring give google ad your money so that's my advice this is how you start do a good job don't worry about the money market yourself put you want to spend your money in a way that's going to give you the biggest return. And I'm here to tell you, Facebook and Google AdWords, by far the two best values for advertising, especially in a, in a home-based service business. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm seeing more of an ROI on my, uh, my Google Ads than I am Facebook. I've pretty much quit boosting or sponsoring Facebook ads. And I say that I'm getting ready to <laughs> sponsor one tomorrow, but it's for a reason. Um, but yeah, man, uh, you know, and look, and if you can't afford somebody like Benji to pay them every month or whatever, hire him just to do your Google listing. And if you want to, you know, get on Wix.com or something and build a website because you feel like you need some type of presence and you're you're on you're balling on a budget, then roll with it that way. But hire somebody like Benji to do your Google listing so they can get to that website that you're building that's just going to hold you over as a crutch until you can get benji to take it over and then um that's right uh i was gonna say something else but uh yeah and then hire him to do your google adwords set up set up your google campaigns if you don't know how that's right that's what i would do <laughs> hey brian moppin uh, that's this is great advice too. Brian says, find the biggest, baddest gorilla in your market. That's a funny way to say it. But look, find 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 the fence company that's in your neighborhood, it's in your area, that's in your city. Make friends with those people. Make friends with those people. They're gonna they're gonna have your back. Okay. See if you can subcon uh, Brian suggests, you know, picking up some subcontract work. You gotta do things that they're gonna fill your schedule so you can stay busy. Okay. Here's the other thing. If you make friends with a larger fence company, Dan, what does a larger fence company do? They always want to refer the stuff they don't want to do to somebody mm -hmm. they like. Not necessarily that does a good job, but hey, call Dan over here at, at 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 the new fence company. He'll he'll take care of you. You know, I send all the work I don't want to do to a guy that used to work for me 20 years ago. Brian Moopin's calling. You want to take that call? Sure, absolutely. Moppin. Brian? Moppin. 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 Yeah. Hello. Hey, Dan. Hey, man. What's going on? You're live on. Come on, Shay. This is Brian Moppin. You're live on My Fence Life. What's happening, What's up, man? Brian? This is Cannon. Can I get a hello, too? It's Brian Moppin, not a Moopin, by the way. Good night, Brian. Brian. Get, um, we want your sound to sound good, brother. So get off your Bluetooth and put your phone up to your ear. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you know me too well. All right. Is that a touch better? Much yeah. better. All right. So I was going to mention that you guys was talking about marketing and stuff like that. And uh, Brian, we're losing you, man. Well, yeah. Goodbye, Brian. Kind of sound like he fell into a tunnel. Yeah, I don't know what happened to him. But anyway, um, I'm reading some of these uh, comments here. Benji said it's different in every market. For some regions, Google works better than Facebook, and and I can agree with that. Facebook oh, worked well Google for me for a long time. If I had a hundred dollars and I had to give it to somebody, I'd give it to Google. Well, that's because it works in your market. I guess. And I'm finding Google's working more now than Facebook used to. Here where I'm at, yeah, you know, Facebook, I, I get a bunch, I get a bunch of attention and and and, and movement, but it's uh, Facebook, I think, is good for building your brand, yes, and identity, you know. But if you're looking for leads, if you want somebody to pick up the phone and call your company, Facebook is not the answer. That's yeah, so I, mean. I used to boost Matt Warner, Warner, Matt Warner, Matt Warner. That's cute. There you go. Matt's on here. Hey, um, 
I use Facebook yeah, Matt to build my brand and my community. And um, the only reason why I boosted posts on Facebook really was to build my brand. Yep. And because of that, I stayed on the forefront of everyone's mind. And my brand has carried me tremendously. Sure. You know? mm -hmm. So, yeah, man. All right. So I think, that's, I think that's question one. What do you got for number two? Question number two, how do you hold your employees accountable and also keep the quality of work up? Bye. Don't look at me. I know how to do that. We use a company cam. And because we do morning, midday, and end of day, uh, um, uh, morning, end of day, yeah, morning, midday, and end of day. I'm sorry. I'm distracted. Because I do that, we're able to see what's going on. I can look and see if the posts aren't being set deep enough. I can, you know, if the neighbor has a fence, I'm like, wait a second. Those posts don't look deep enough. What's going on with that? Yep. And we can keep track of the quality that way. Company cam is a huge, huge thing for us. They have videos. You can do 4K videos up to 10 minutes long. And... My guys are taking videos, taking pictures, and one, our Monday morning meeting consists of us talking about safety, talking about how their week was, their weekend. You know, if they got anything going on at home they need some help with, and guess what, guys? Hey, we got this project that we weren't 100% on, and we need to. it works, but we need to make sure that, uh, that we do this differently from now on. And we use all of our company cam photos and videos in our Monday morning meeting to do that. All right. That's the best way that I found it without physically being on the job. Yep. So so I'm gonna give you some direct approaches from my end. How about that? So yeah. how do you hold your team accountable? Um how do you keep the quality of of, of, of work up? He goes on to say is the boss required to go by the job to ensure the quality and collect checks. So here's the deal. Um, as you grow your business, you want to have more people doing more rows to eliminate some of your work. Okay. Early on, which I still feel I'm pretty damn early on. Okay. You're going to have to be involved in a lot of this. You're going to have to get out. You're going to have to go see some stuff. You're going to have to go teach these guys how to do a good, you have to, you can only tell somebody so, so much how to do a good job. Eventually you got to go show them how to do a good job. You know, um, I probably do this way more than I should, but I go build fence, you know, once a week, probably it seems like. And it, it it's good for my soul. It relieves me. And it helps me to understand that they understand. Okay. Uh that the team understands. And they all want to do a good job. Sometimes they just don't know what to do, you know. So for me, there's the, here's some tangibles for you. So how do you make sure they do a good job? Or how do you hold them accountable, rather? So here at Jackson Fence, we've got a really good culture. Like people talk about our company as being a strong, um, you know, a strong company as, as far as people. And I will say we have a very talented pool of people. Now, with that said, it's not always rainbows and butterflies either. There's days where, you know, we have really hard conversations and we we don't like each other. We go home frustrated. We go home mad. We go home and you know, some nasty text messages get sent back and forth. Yeah. But it's all out of love for what we do, okay? I love what I'm doing. My guys love what they're doing. My team loves what, 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 what we're doing, you know? And sometimes because you get people that love the same thing, they have differences of opinions, and they get upset with each, each other, you know? So that, that's what I was going to say, man. We, we get our guys to grab hold of our vision. Yeah. And we want to be – the fence company that builds fence that gives you a lifetime warranty, lifetime workmanship warranty. And to do that, we have to build the ASTM standards. And all of our guys are on board with that. Like, hey, guys, we're building fence better than anyone else out there. That's right. Until somebody else in my market says, hey, I'm going to start following ASTM standards. Until then, we're the guys. Yeah. And we're hoping that other people in our market start building ASTM standards and start offering a lifetime workmanship warranty because then we're going to level the playing field and they're going to have as much labor in the job that I have. They're going to have as much material in the job that I have. And it's going to make things better 
not only for my business and their business, but for the industry. So grab hold of the vision. Yep. Yeah, so 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 get your team to buy in. But as far as holding the, the team accountable, this is this is my simple concept. And I assume uh, I assume we're talking about production team members, team members in the field that build fence. So this is this is what we do. Um, we're 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 a ninety percent residential fence company, and we assign projects for the whole week. Like you can walk into our um, facility. There's a TV screen on at all times. It shows every crew in a in a in a column one two three four and every job we're doing that week every day okay so and they're all assigned you know certain man hours they're all assigned you know a certain dollar value they're all assigned all this stuff okay at the end of the day we work a four day work week our production crews out in the field work four days their weekend begins when their jobs that were planned for them that week are done okay so. You know, Dan, if I give you four different jobs across four different days, but for some reason the, the fourth one or whatever needs a, needs some more time, well, guess what? Your team comes in on Friday. Your team comes in on Saturday, whatever that looks like to finish those jobs. And eventually, it's going to cost you some money in overtime, but that's what we do in business. We spend a crap ton of money trying to learn and figure it out. But eventually, yeah. people get tired of coming in when they could be at home, when they could be off. And they start to figure out how to get it done on time, on the time that was allotted. Okay. That's what I see happen. Also, talking about the quality of work. If you get a call back or a complaint or, hey, I need y'all to come and check this or whatever, you figure out who assigned or who built that fence in your company. And they have to fix it that week. A lot of times that's their day off. They got to go out and fix it. You still pay them. You still pay them. It's gonna cost you. It's gonna cost you overtime, and which is also more money on 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 insurance and more money on taxes and more money directly. It's gonna cost you all that stuff. More money in fuel. I get it, but you do it. You pull them out of the uh, you know, the day off mode, and eventually that stuff starts to starts to get lesser because you're yeah. you're holding them accountable. This is your job. It's got to be done. If it's not done it's not like well let's just go home it is what it is hey no you've got to get it done period you know what i mean there's no other other way to it so that's what we do here um now we also use the the company cam and the uh, connect team and the you know send your updates send your completed job folders you know send all that stuff in so yeah i think you hit on a solid point canon sending people back to fix their mistakes yeah you yeah. know i've been on this one crew to use nothing we used uh two and a half inch uh wood screws deck screws whenever we build our gates okay we use that to put everything together well he's like oh well nailing it's quicker nailing it's quicker like yeah but if you nail it it's a whole lot harder to come back and tweak that gate or fix it so guess what he's got a gate that's sagging some and if he would have used screws he could have just right. unscrewed that main z brace pried up on it screwed it back in adjusted the latch and rolled out now he's got to go over there and cut it off cut all the nails with a sawzall and he's going to spend four times as long fixing it oh but i'll tell you what he isn't going to do it again right so that's another way you know can't can it hit on it great that's a great way to keep up your quality and make them do what you need done and you know what for why you do here's the other here's the other thing if you go into a manufacturing facility, okay, at the end of the day, what we're doing when we build fence, it's all production. It's all, we are literally manufacturing fence in these people's yards, okay? So there's a there's a real common, you know, uh, thread there. If you go into a manufacturing plant, I don't care what it is, whether it's food or, or, or you know, mechanical stuff or, or, or materials, whatever. They have these these people in these rows, and those rows are called quality control. Okay, those people exist for a reason, and that reason is because the people who are assigned to build the product, they're not going to catch the stuff that the company doesn't want. The company has a standard, a bare minimum. We have to exceed this bare minimum. Well, the people as they're sending stuff down the line or whatever, they're just doing their job. They're pulling the lever, or whatever. They're hitting the button, you know. Right. If it's major, they'll probably see it. But for the most part, they're not. They're just sending it. You know what I mean? Now, 
when build fence, you know, our fence builders, our team, they need to have an eye for this stuff. Okay. But the same concept, in my opinion, applies to fence. You've got to have somebody who's overseeing the quality of work. Somebody who visits the jobs, not just because the customer called and says, hey, I don't know if this is right. I don't know that I like this. But somebody on your team that goes out when the job is done and visually inspects the job. Not every job, not half of the jobs, but a random selection. Okay. And if you, got, you go out. You have Brandon doing it? Yes. Yes, Brandon does that. So if you go out to one job out of every five that a crew builds, you're going to get a, a pretty good consensus. All right. And there's a if there's an opportunity to talk about it. If there's a win, you talk about it, you know. And I got to be honest, man, I'm one of the worst. Like it's it's sometimes easier. It doesn't make me feel good, but sometimes it's easier for me to talk about the negatives and the losses and the things yeah. that we're not doing well than it is for me to talk about the positives and the wins and the positive reviews. You know, I You're sent right. out a message today. I got, I got a voicemail. We got a voicemail at our company. And here's the thing. I only seem to hear about the bad stuff. Somebody called, was upset. We had a problem. And I get a, 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 a text message of the sound clip. It's a voicemail. I listen to it. So what do I do? I don't know that I handled this right, Dan, but I send it out to the whole team. Hey, guys, listen to this voicemail. This is what we cannot do with the company. It's 6 o'clock at night. We've got somebody upset, so upset they're calling us, and this is what they're saying. Listen to this. And yeah. by the way, this person on our team installed this fence. Put them out there. I do that sometimes, you know. Yeah. Is it right? Is it wrong? I don't know, you know. But one of my guys responded back um, somehow out of this. Um, it came out, hey, it's always negative. Is there ever any good stuff? Is there ever any positive reviews? And the reality of it is, is, yeah, there's a crap ton of that stuff too, you know? And I'm terrible, terrible at relaying those. Maybe because I don't see them as much. Maybe because I don't get them right in my face, you know? But everything that's bad comes across my desk, comes across my phone. You know I what I mean? i tell you what I've been doing, man. Whenever we get our, our review and we get a bunch of them, we're knocking on 300 five star reviews um whenever i get one i screen i answer it i respond to it i screenshot it i send it in hey guys great job on you know and then i give gold stars out to whoever was on that team and uh they're constantly waiting for those they're like man i can't believe we didn't get a five star on that that guy said he was going to do one right so i try to balance it out but it's hard because you know everybody you know they say shit rolls downhill right well yeah. It does. It rolls right down to me because everything's on top of me. I'm the peak of the triangle, and everything goes up. You got to share both. Though. You can't. You can't manage. You cannot manage with kick gloves. You know, and I think I'm bad about that sometimes. You know, I think I got. I got kick gloves on. Hey, Justin Neri says when you build a team, you become a family. You spend more time to get it together than you do with your family. You're going to argue like family. Good days and bad days. Amen. Yeah. What's up, Andy Pearson? <laughs> Andy Andy's all in. in. Andy, yeah, Andy. Oh, wait, wait. Like, uh, maybe I've been drinking too much. We got Andy Pearson and Aaron Preston. I thought I was seeing all the same guy there for a second. Yes, yeah, trippy in it. Yeah. So, hey, Aaron Preston says, how many guys do we have? Aaron, uh, Aaron, there's usually three guys on a crew. We got three crews of three guys each and one crew of two guys. So Yeah, we just shut it down to two guys per crew. No, I think that's fine, bro. I think it's more than fine. Um, Andy Pearson, hey, brother, good evening. Andy's one of ours here at Team Blue. Um, hey, guys, Andy, is, uh, his, his son is in the – in the. here we go. Oh, yeah, he's the guy with the uh, – yeah, His son is in St. Jude's. Yeah. 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 He says, thank you all for the love and support for Jacob. So, hey, look, yeah, we shared a uh, – like a GoFundMe or whatever. And, and the fence community, Dan, my goodness, that doesn't even know Andy. Like, Andy's not even been with us, you know, for a long, long time. But we shared his, his story. We shared the story about Jacob. And, and man, we got tons of freaking donations from the fence community. Like almost six or seven thousand dollars in like a night. It was incredible. Yeah. What so, was the so, overall at the end? Uh, I guess he hit 10. 10 was the overall goal. Um, but so so Jacob is is in the um in, in St. Jude. He's battling leukemia. And um me and Andy were talking about. Uh, Jacob just a you know a little while ago and, and he's uh, 
Jacob really has this tough faced persona. Like he just looks so chill and cool. He doesn't ever, he never looks scared. You know what I mean? Just look, looks like uh-huh. a kid enjoying life. And he was telling me how he never complains, how he's going through this, you know, uh, more, more rounds of chemo. And, and he got out of the hospital for a little while. I had this little like apartment. They, you know, the, the target house, they call it target sponsors, these little apartment houses for St. Jude. Right. Mm-hmm. He was out for a little while living in this apartment then had to go back to the hospital. So just, a lot of ups and downs in this journey, you know, but um, kids stay positive, man. So, so good stuff. Just want to share that. That's, that's, that's my team. Those are my people and um, they're important to me. So. Yeah, man. Evan Gardner said, damn blonde, mind if I ride down to the armpit and take some notes? I love it. Dude, this is sticking, bro. You are in the armpit of America. I am not in the armpit. I'm Swampy fun. butt armpit of America. I'll go with the swamp butt, but. I don't know if I can go with the armpit, man. That's taking it a little too far. I don't know, Evan. Now I'm wondering if I should let you come down here since you called it the armpit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question three, Dan O. Uh, probably the last one. Um, how are you convincing or helping customers to let go of their money when so many think a recession is coming soon or even happening? Wow. Well, you want me to answer that one? <laughs> I just send Victor Vasquez in. They just write a check. Victor comes in. Pop, pop, pop. So, comes so how do you convince how, how are you convincing your customers to let go of their money uh when, well, when all this talk of a recession is, is is looming? Is that is that kind of the question? Yeah. Wait, Evan, you're in Denham Springs? Um all right, so I'm sorry, guys. I'm reading the comments here. Evan says Denim Springs is just as sweaty. That's right up the road for me. One test um, I tell you what, man. Go to the Fence King Facebook page, and you'll see what I'm doing. I made a post today. I still got to tweak it a little bit. Pepper is the one who has a college degree in uh, in uh, English and writing, so I'm going to have her look it over and make sure it's right. Dang, but, I have uh, got my damn cord all hung up in my chair. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta fix this. I'm finna pull my whole keyboard on. Hold on. God, not Joe, I've been... <laughs> oh man, Cannon. All right, I got it. I got it. All right, you keep calling me on it. This cord, usually I hate short cords. But this particular cord, do you see this? This damn it's thing long, is bro. so long. Look, I got mine curled up and like taped together. So it stays on my desk. Otherwise, I'd be all wrapped up in it like an extension cord. You know what I mean? Like I was. Yeah, yeah. So maybe you should tie it up like that. But uh, anyway, like I was saying, go to um, go to the face uh, Fence King Facebook page, and you'll see what I'm doing. Um, I made a post today, and Pepper's gonna review it when I get home. Pepper, if you're listening right now, uh, review that post for me, girl. I need to get it right before I boost it. But um, financing. I mean, <laughs> we got another one today. We've had four. We've had two this month already. Wait, Are wait, we answering a question right now? What's I don't forgot. What is? Uh, how do you let convince you people to let go of their money? That whole that whole music thing really do. <laughs> 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 so you, you know, um, we're offering so let, let customers yeah. customers letting go of their money. How do you convince them to let go of their money? Okay, financing. I'm well, with you. I'm, I'm convincing following. them to I'm keep. I'm following. Their money. I'm convincing them to keep their money. I'm like, hey, keep your savings, keep your nest egg, and go with our financing. And oh, we wow. have a very we have a very unique financing uh, option for you, to where um, you can use the entire income of the house qualify and um you know if the, if someone else is on the loan that the i forget how it goes but the the co-signer isn't tied to the loan i believe it is <clears throat> um there's no prepayment penalty you know i mean i said this on my uh on my call with nathan on monday you gotta work on you gotta work on your delivery uh, I, I actually have, I actually have it all written down and it's laminated. Where is <laughs> so it I at? Right through it. That's Where why I don't know it by heart because I'm constantly. Did you put it up, it. huh? Did you put it up? Yeah, I put it up. It's it's filed away. Whenever I get a finance customer on the phone, I'm like, hey, let me tell you this, and I grab it. Got my little script. 
but um it's just because i don't want to miss anything but yeah there's no prepayment penalty uh monday i was talking to nathan downs about some real serious stuff with uh with the fence king and what we're doing to, to fix it and one of the things we talked about was um financing and i got a guy you know financed a fifteen thousand dollar job for 15 years oh wow like, there's no prepayment penalty it's like all right he said this uh downturn if it lasts another eight months or so when things pick up i'll just pay it off if not i got 15 years right and guess what he still has his savings he still has that rainy day fund he still has that nest egg so really i'm convincing people to say keep their money don't spend it in finance you know 9.9 percent that's a good deal yeah i mean it's i mean i even have it on my uh my thing i mean credit cards are 16 percent 18 percent if you want to uh do a heloc which if people who don't know what that is, that's a, a home equity line of credit. If you do one of those, they're running like 8%. But the thing about it is, is if you do that, your house is the security for that loan. So right. even though the interest rate might be a little better, you want to lose your house over a fence because you got a home equity line of credit? No. You want to use, uh, you wanna use is, uh, a financing deal to where uh <clears throat> you can go from there so look at here this is this is this is our um well you got me off camera i'm gonna pull mine up real quick yeah, do your thing bro so look this is our sunlight financial this is our quick uh reference guide so guys if, if you want financing you know jack uh jackson fence and the fence team both we're both using sunlight financial we've been we've both been using it for a few months we've been keeping it kind of between the two of us testing it out you know, seeing what we liked about it, we used to promote a a different um, finance company. We both kind of got away from that, so we're testing this one out. And and just so you know, it's got the uh, got the My Fence Life uh, stamp of approval. So so here's a chart. So like, let's start at fifty five hundred dollars, and this is just a quick reference chart for sixty you months. Mine. You get a payment down to one sixteen. Uh, mm -hmm. For one twenty months, five ten years, you get a payment down to seventy two. Seventy two dollars. Yeah, so so you can upset your same, customer. You got the same sheet. How's that? You can upset your customer by two thousand dollars, okay? And and over ten years, you only change your payment by twenty seven dollars. So, right. really making it easy to um, to sell. Now, this is a sheet here um, that we just kind of created. There's a calculator tool through Sunlight that you can go through and put these numbers in, and it tells you the tells you the different payments. But everybody yeah. always has the same question, and we wanted to be able to answer their question easily. But the question is this. Well, if I do it for five years, how much will my payment be? You don't want to go to a calculator and type this in and um, yeah. you know, try to try to find all that information or figure uh -huh. it out. You want to have well, a job 7,500? Uh, yeah. It's going to run you about 160 bucks a month. Yeah. Uh, here's mine. I got so mine laminated. Heck yeah. Cannon's got five and 10 year. We've got 12 and 15 year. Yep. And then we also have the people with bad credit. Well, not bad credit, but it's not the greatest credit. We got their rates right here. And then we have our sales pitch. I don't know if you can see it. We got our sales pitch. And then we've got a, if they aren't qualified, pre qualified, we got a, SOP that we go through with that, man. And we're working it hard. Everybody's got one of these on their desk. That's right. And that's how we're selling it. Um, <laughs> Benji said it's a nice looking reference sheet. Sure Thank you, Benji. Leaves. It's sure that Benji, Benji helped out with that. That's another good reason why to have somebody like Benji in your back pocket. You're like, hey, Benji, I need you to make this. And a couple of days later, it's in your, uh, in your email and ready to rock and roll. Yeah, so so John Waithy, he's he's jumped onto the sunlight, uh, the sunlight finance game, and he says hard sucks. I guess he's gonna kick their ass. That's what he <laughs> last three episodes. He's <laughs> somebody's ass. So um, yeah, sunlight well, the finance. About, the thing about sunlight, I want to say this yeah. real quick, guys. Make sure you sign up for the uh, the um, the draws. D R A W S. Make sure you draw you sign up for the 30% draw. So once somebody gets approved, 
you right away you can get a 30 percent draw keep your cash flow that's right yeah so so one of the good things too that i liked about sunlight when you know he brought out the other the other rival hearth hearth um hearth was good because people could do it on their own that that was the allure you like it it really needed no help from your company yeah. to facilitate the approval or the funding however because of that same benefit anybody could use your website to get money i and can't never tell you how many such jobs i've financed i mean me too. I, I assume we i assume we financed the fence for somebody i mean hell they might have got it and got a car i don't know what they were doing with it you know what i mean but yeah we financed people as well and never sold fences to these people you know and that was a real you know honestly that was a real pain in the ass um Kind of pissed me and, off, be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And the end, like interest all this rate, work, all in, I offer the financing. I ride by your house and they got Billy Joe Bob's fence on on your fence. And I know you use my financing because you got financed through my uh, finance sure. company. That's right. That's right. So I quit using them. So Sunlight, uh, a little bit more involvement on 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 the uh, on the company side. You know, you got to send some links over. Got to got to kind of process and push this through for them. However, the money goes straight to you, and never yeah. to the customer. So there's no there's no middleman. Now there are some there are some controls and some safeguardings for the customer that they're gonna have to like. like Sunlight is gonna have to see a contract. Sunlight is also gonna have to see like a what is it like a completion agreement or something. Um, like, hey, yeah, this job actually got done and, and the customer satisfied form or whatever, you know. So there's some things there to safeguard the customer and, and to make it work. But, um, yeah, all in all, so much better. So uh, Evan yeah, Gardner, yeah. that's why he left Hearth, too. So Hearth, man, you're getting smacked around over here. And Yeah, Hearth is uh, it's easy, man. You just send them a link. It's done with sunlight. You got to actually talk to the customer and, you know. It's it, it's you got it takes a while to figure it out. It's taken me a few months to figure it out, but we got it dialed in. Right. It's like Tetris, you know. Well, Dano, that's three up and three down, brother. Yeah, man. Good job. Yeah, good job. We didn't get a whole lot of questions in here, man. Everybody was just uh talking about what we were talking about. They're so nice. Yeah. It looks like everybody liked what we said too. I'm reading through these comments, and uh, there's a bunch of comments, man. Jesus, I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Facebook is on point. Yeah, it is. Well, look, uh, guys, Andy we'll have this says, up tomorrow morning, huh? Hey, Andy, check with me tomorrow, man. Uh, this is my oh, this is my secret candy bowl. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of treats what? in here, like M and M's and Skittles, and do you really? Uh, uh, hats. hats. Stain can. So, look, guys, before we go, go to ozfence.store, use promo code MFL15. Oh. You'll get 15% off, and you'll have boxes like this showing up at your door within a couple of days. And That's you get right. free shipping on $150 or more on your orders. You can even get expert stain and seal delivered. It came in that box right there, straight from ozfence.store. That's right. Well, I got we three, and I got to, I got to, I got to bounce. We got to get this downloaded. And I got a forty-five minute exercise routine that I got to take care of. So, let's get yeah, it. let's get out of here, man. Great oh, man. show. Good talking to you, man. And uh, I think we're gonna leave the show out with this right here. If it hadn't been for Cotton Eye Joe, I'd been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from?